I looked at the last iteration and it's a small robot about this big and it has a hand that looks like a head and it's so sophisticated that it can it can gyrate to music spontaneously and it can keep its head in the same place while it does it like a chicken and so and it can open doors and it's like it's it's quite the remarkable creature and and the the rate of advance from the first robot which was called big dog which is a very terrifying thing to 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 watch big dog to this is quite staggering and that's only going to increase insanely that that ability over the next 5 years you know people still think about those as cars but that isn't what they are they're autonomous self-learning robots and the fact that they happen to take the form of cars at the moment is almost irrelevant you know they're no more cars than cars were horseless buggies right they're a whole new thing the increasingly complex capabilities of robots will eventually eliminate some human tasks but not all current robotics technology can automate only 25% of tasks in unpredictable human dependent areas like construction and nursing but robots depend on human programming and they likely always will essentially the robot will walk around the base on predefined or remotely controlled paths it can then be used to detect and remotely relay voice instructions to trespassing individuals. It allows them to keep situational awareness on their base with a minimum of manpower. Since the robot's dogs are able to cross any terrain, it seems like we could use them to travel to locations without roads. Perhaps if the technology keeps up. In the future we won't even need roads but will instead ride on animal-inspired robots across any path we wish. And you know there's something very strange about robots that people don't generally think about some people do. Imagine you have a robot and it can learn a few things through imitation and we already have robots that can do that because you can program a robot industrial robot that's worth about $20,000. You can move its arm the way you want it to move its arm and then it will move its arm that way. So imitation is is Imitation is coming up very rapidly and the capacity to autonomously learn is already there to some degree. So they're always after the next new thing as fast as possible. So it's a machine that's speeding along as fast as a machine possibly can. And and God only knows where it's headed in some sense, right? Because there's so many things happening at the same time that it's impossible to keep track. And we don't even know what these things are. Like the the autonomous cars that are being developed you know people still think about those as cars but that isn't what they are they're autonomous self-learning robots historically robots that have been successful have been on the special purpose end of the spectrum for example a manufacturing robot might be designed to move a car chassis following a very precise and specific pattern or a vacuum cleaning robot which is designed to vacuum your floor obviously neither of these robots could do the other's job the people who think about and build robots are pretty smart. Why haven't they tried to build a general purpose robot? Will they be able to develop general purpose robots? While Boston Dynamics robots have long been an area of research and development, they have recently been put to work. The current incarnation, known as Spot, is currently being outfitted for doing what it does best. You know, I, I have a variety of contacts in Silicon Valley and there are people there that I've been communicating with who believe that it's already within their power to build a, an AI machine that will have higher computational capacity than the human brain. That's within five years. Now that assumes that they've got the computational capacity of the brain properly calculated, and that's not necessarily the case. But even if they're out by a factor of 10, that's not many iterations past that. Now maybe we don't understand the brain at all, that's certainly possible, but... but it isn't just the rapid increase in computational power that's doubling so quickly. I don't know if any of you, how many of you watched the Boston Dynamics videos? So, how many of you don't know what I'm talking about? Okay, so one of the things I would highly recommend is that you go home and go to YouTube and, and look up Boston Dynamics because it's the most advanced robotics company in the world and it was a DARPA project, so a, an American defense uh, company and they were bought by Google five years ago and they had pretty damn impressive robots five years ago they were autonomous and and uh, so they could they could uh, make their way over rough terrain including snow up hills if they slipped on the ice they could right themselves if you pushed them over they could pu put themselves back up and that's not joystick controlled that was all autonomous but 
We don't really understand the mechanism. We don't understand the mechanism at all. And that's actually all fine, except that we don't have general purpose robots yet, although they probably are more or less around the corner in about five years, partly because the AI researchers solved this problem, and part of the way they solved it was by embodying cognition, incarnating artificial intelligence in an embodied structure. Intelligent systems are a necessary component to solve the problems of creating a model of the world, a system of action planning and goal management. The knowledge base in intelligent systems is one of the main parts of the world model and its transformation functions. Image recognition has long been a necessary part of complex robotic systems. Autonomous cars create and maintain a map of their surroundings based on a variety of sensors situated in different parts of the vehicle. I talked to the people at uh, Tesla who ran the autonomous car division and they know perfectly well they weren't creating autonomous cars because an autonomous car isn't a car. It's a robot and it's not just a robot, it's a fleet of robots and it's a fleet of intelligent robots and some of the functions that it will perform will be the functions of a car but to think about that as a car is just, you're just confused. It's like to think of a car as a horseless carriage. Um, the, the person who ran the division told me that They'd already had plans instantiated so that all the Tesla cars map the roads and they're mapping them at an increasingly high level of resolution and then they share the data and they expected to get to the point where the car would be able to predict where the bumps on the road were that it was approaching and adjust the suspension so that when you hit the bump you wouldn't feel that at all because the suspension would have mapped the bump before it encountered it. And so, and that's just, you know, it seems like a trivial example in some sense, but it's not trivial. It's, it's, it's an example of how unbelievably quickly this technology is progressing. And what's really interesting about robots like that is that they basically, they're all identical, right? More or less. And what that means is that when one learns something, every one of them learns it at the same time. And so even if they're not very bright, if there's 10 million of them, or 100 million of them, and they're all learning one thing a day, that's a hundred million new things a day that every one of them is learning. And so they're mapping the road and they're learning how to operate in a natural environment, which is a really big deal. Like it's a really, really big deal. They're learning to map the perception of the world onto action, which is really the definition, a good definition in some sense of intelligence. And so, and then everyone in Silicon Valley is rushing to produce artificially intelligent systems, which are being tried out in 50 different ways, a hundred different ways now. And then they're also rushing to build more and more powerful computational devices as fast as they possibly can. Robotics will unquestionably have a dramatic impact on both our personal and professional lives. But in both instances, robotics can make our lives much easier by handling tasks we may not be able to do ourselves or support us when we need help doing tasks. If you find this content interesting, then give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to hit that subscribe button below. See you in the next video.